Thank you. Thank you very much. I didn't get a response the first time. It's, it's like a classroom full of teenage kids, you know. Hey, sit down. Shut up. So, anyway, <clears throat> welcome to Prospect Street uh, Church. I'm so glad that you made it out this morning. Uh, why don't we just stand? You've already, already done it, but stand and greet each other in the name of Jesus Christ. It was my turn to have a conversation. Okay, let us praise the Lord. Let the praise team lead us. We're going to wake you up now. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkness. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. We were sinners and so unworthy. Still for us He chose to
Thank you, Linda. <coughs> Thank you. We want to continue to remember um, Wally um, with his recovery and also Pete. As uh, most of you know, instead of having three bypasses, he had five. So he went from having a heart cath to having three passes to have bypasses to having five. Um, all in the matter of a couple of days. <laughs> but um, he's doing very well. Um, Judy says he's sitting up in a chair. He's in a regular room um, and eating. So uh, that is excellent. So um, remember especially Judy as he will come home sometime this week. So we need to remember her. Um, <coughs> Angie Collier. That is Mike Mills' daughter, Angie Collier, she has stage one breast cancer. So um, let us uh, remember him, her. And Paul Arts, Arts um, he's in hospital with severe diabetes. <coughs> and I would ask you also to remember um, the chrysalis, boys chrysalis walk that is going on right now in Piqua. I will be going uh, later on today to give a talk down there. I'm meeting my daughter in um, Marysville, and she's going to drive me there. She was going, and I said, good, you can pick me up <laughs> uh, so I don't have to drive there and back today. <coughs> um, they only had uh, five boys, but you know what? That's five souls for Christ. Um, Dominic is the lay director, so he's put this thing together, and I guess they're doing uh, really well, so very proud of him. Um, there was something else, and I can't remember. Oh, well. Um, let us go to the Lord in prayer. O oh Lord, as we come before your throne this morning, we give you thanks and praise for getting us here safely. We remember all those <coughs> who are not able to get out right now, whether they're sick we remember Bob, who came in this morning and wasn't feeling well, so went home. And we remember all our shut-ins, those who were in hospital, those who were at home recovering. We remember those in our, in our nursing homes, those who would love to be here and they're not able to be. We remember those who could be here, who are not. And Lord, we, we, your people, desire for this church to be full, for souls to be won. You do the saving, but we are employed as your followers to reach out to people and tell them the good news. Lord, encourage us never to give up doing that but to continue. Lord, we each have our own private prayers that we're lifting up to you. Bless those. Answer our prayers, O oh Lord. And now we lift up to you the prayer that you taught us as we say together, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Just before the um, <coughs> praise team comes back up, I want to point out the insert that you have in your bulletin. Um, it's two-sided, we're saving paper, but um, particularly I want to point out to you about the general conference. 
it begins, and if anybody says you don't know anything about this general conference, then you obviously haven't been listening, because I have mentioned it. It begins Saturday. Um, there's many churches, many, many United Methodists who are um, really concerned about what will happen. Nobody knows what's going to happen, because it hasn't happened yet. But please, keep all the delegates, um, the bishops, all those organizers uh, in your prayers. You can stay informed, and I've given you some different ways here you can. And you can even live stream if you would want to do that. I'm going to check in every now and again. Um, and then following, I'm sure there's going to be loads of meetings, and the media are going to catch up on this. Don't believe everything you read or hear in the news. I just want to say that. Um, we will have a meeting here um, if there's any decisions to make or about what happened um, once I'm informed. I can't really have a meeting till I'm informed. Well, I could, but it wouldn't be any good. So um, uh, just keep this in your prayers. It affects each and every one of us. Thank you. If you're able, please stand for the reading of the scripture this morning, which comes from the book of Titus, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. Remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, and to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and to show true humility toward all men. At one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that, having been justified in his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying. And I want you to stress these things so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. These things are excellent and profitable 
for everyone. This is the word of God from long ago for the people of God today. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. What a reading, right? We had a reading from Titus last week, and I was determined not to use Titus again, but I loved this reading and uh, uh, how, how fitting it is. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, we need to live out this scripture today to take Paul's words into our hearts, our souls, and our minds so that we can do our best to treat everyone with kindness and goodness that comes from within. So remind us today, Lord, what it is to be both kind and good. Amen. This church helps so many people in our community through all our outreach groups, many of them. Neighborhood supper, neighborhood outreach, community breakfast, and the uh, other uh, places where we give support, such as the homeless shelter, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, and I believe they are listed in the newsletter. If you read the newsletter, it was li they were listed in there. And then sometimes we have people referred from Love, Inc. We work with them. They're a clearinghouse. So they already get the backstory, and I feel more secure about helping people who have already been to them. Every now and again, we help people with uh, rent. We join with other churches to help with rent or bills if they're over. And um, we also, um, what we specialize in is gas cards when people have appointments and they don't have gas. We give out normally $10 increments, and we never, ever, ever give cash or gas cards anymore. They have to go down to the certified, and we have an account with them. Isn't it terrible that we want to help people, but we have to do it that way because we don't want to um, influence any habits that they may have. So how do I know if these people who show up here are in a weekday and it's just me and Erica, how do I know if it's legitimate or not? People ask me that. And when I first began um, being a pastor, I, it's like, what do I do? I don't teach you that in seminary. <laughs> I could use my gut feeling, you know, the Holy Spirit that speaks to me after I've had a short conversation with them. The fact is that I have to make a decision based on what I hear. Sometimes I, we, are used or taken. And sometimes we don't realize how much good we do. So I ask myself, are we really, in helping others, showing goodness and kindness, or um, are we just an easy target? That's a great question, isn't it, for churches today, for us today? But here is what I have come to realize. I desire to do good, to be kind, and to act like Jesus. I don't always do that, but it's my desire. If someone wants to abuse the help they get, it is on their conscience, not mine. Whether it's legitimate or not, my goal is for each person to see the goodness and kindness of Jesus through this church. Whether the person is honest or not, I don't want to miss that opportunity to help a stranger who might be Christ himself. And so that's what I go with. What's a few dollars here and there? And maybe we plant a seed. Today, you turn on the news and the headlines are always about some disaster somewhere in the world. And maybe if you can stand to watch the news all the way through, you reach the end and the very end is usually a story about someone or something good that has happened. 
It's the wrong way around, isn't it? There are those people who love their children and grandchildren. All they want is the best for them. And they think they're doing good when they give that child anything and everything they want. What they're really doing is preventing that child from ever knowing what it is to want. For Jesus said, blessed are the poor, the weak, the merciful, the pure in heart, and the peacemakers. So I'm asking you this week, you're off patience. How many of you are relieved about that? (laughs) This week, where do you see and notice kindness and goodness lived out in your everyday life? Not just yourselves, but other people. Which begs the question, what is kindness and goodness? Are they really different? Are they the same? Well, these two fruits are always seen together, kindness and goodness. Why? Because they have the same, they're from the same Greek word. When the Bible was translated, they made, the English made two words out of this, but really they come from the same word, meaning usefulness, upright, moral excellence in character. Do you think we've got some work to do here? (laughs) The differences are kindness is the ability to act for the welfare of others. The ability to act for the welfare of others. This is not natural to us because of our sinful nature. We must be taught this and learn it and take it on for ourselves. Goodness is caring for others, but with tough love. Helping them in ways that they really need, but don't necessarily want. Kindness without goodness can become tolerant of sin. Goodness without kindness can become harsh and legalistic. Goodness and kindness go together. So you can't tell me I'm kind but not good or good but not kind. Kindness and goodness are not free. They always cost us something. Time energy, investment of some sort. Jesus risked being kind and good in a society where people either loved him or hated him and wanted him killed. Nevertheless, Jesus had an excellent moral character. I don't think any of us can doubt that. He healed the sick and the diseased. He fed the poor. He raised people from the dead. And he raised hope wherever he went by teaching about the coming kingdom of God. In Matthew 18, Peter asks Jesus a question. How many times should I forgive? And then gives the answer, is 77 times enough? You see, kindness and goodness, when you put them together, produce forgiveness. In answer, Jesus tells the story of a servant. It's known as the parable of the wicked servant. He owes the king 10,000 talents, and the king is calling in his debt. He comes before the king, and he says, I cannot pay. So the king orders for him and his wife and children all to be sold to repay the debt. He fell on his knees and begged the king, please be patient with me and I will pay everything back. The king took pity, 
showed goodness and kindness. He totally canceled the man's debt and let him go. Kindness and goodness show forgiveness. Right after he was let go, the servant left, and he found a fellow servant who owed him a hundred denarii, so much smaller of an amount than the 10,000 talents he owed the king. And he, too, demanded payment right now. The fellow servant fell on his knees, and he begged him, please be patient with me, and I will pay you back everything. Now this man, this servant, had just been shown goodness and kindness of the king, and he forgot, forgave all his debt. But this prisoner refused to give, prisoner, servant, refused to give his fellow servant forgiveness, and he had him thrown into prison. People who saw this went back and told the king, so he called this servant in front of him and called him a wicked servant. You were shown kindness and goodness and mercy and forgiveness because you pleaded your case and I felt sorry for you. And the king as the ruling authority who could have done whatever he wanted threw this man into prison. The king, who was in charge of everything and you would expect to be, uh, to throw out punishments and do whatever he wanted, was the one who showed goodness and kindness. And the servant, when he was shown that, you would have thought he would have shown the other servant the same thing and he chose not to. That's our world that we live in. That's how goodness and kindness works. You don't do it because it was shown you. You do it because it's in your heart. It never tells us what happened to the second servant. But seeing as the king knew this story, I wonder if he called that servant in, paid off his debt, and maybe hired him in place of the wicked servant. Ephesians 6, 9 and 10 says this. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. If we cannot treat each other with goodness and kindness, we're not going to do that outside the four walls of our church, are we? So this week, as you go about your everyday lives, think about how you show goodness and kindness coming from inside who you are. And how do others around you show that? Titus 2.7 says, In everything, set an example by doing what is good. You never know who's watching. In today's reading in Titus 3, God sa- or it's, uh, Paul says that God did not withhold kindness and goodness from us when we were reeked with sin. Instead, he saved us, not because we were good or did anything good, but because of his mercy. Mercy comes from a heart full of goodness and kindness. And he justified us. Justified. Just as if I'd never sinned. That's how good and kind God is. Just like the king 
in the parable. Paul then goes on to say, be careful to devote yourselves to doing what is good. Or you're going to end up like the wicked servants. There's many times I get tired of doing good. <laughs> I just kind of want to go away on my own. I don't want to reach out to anyone else or talk to anyone on the phone. Yesterday I was talking with Christiana, making arrangements where to meet so she can pick me up. And she said, I called you twice already this week. Now, I can only remember one phone call, but she said, and you didn't answer. And I remember fully, she called, and I was tired of doing good that day, so I didn't answer. What opportunities could we miss because we are not devoted to doing good? So I want to end today with a famous quote from John Wesley, our founder. He would say this all the time. And today I'm going to pray it as a blessing prayer over us as we go out this week. So let us pray and listen to these words. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. Amen. Let us stand and sing our final song. Lord, as we leave this place and enter a world who mostly doesn't care anything for anything but themselves, help us to show goodness and kindness because you will provide a way and we are the instruments to plant the seeds and you, Lord, will grow the harvest. Be with us, go before us, behind us, beside us. And we ask all this in the wonderful name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat>